One of the big motivations of studying stereoisomeric relationships is to draw conclusions about the relative yields of two stereoisomeric products produced by a reaction. We saw that after concluding that a pair of products are stereoisomers, we could reason about whether the reaction coordinate diagrams or the energy profiles of the two reactions leading to P1 and P2 are the same or different. A conceptually related situation involves making the same judgment for two different groups within a single molecule. And throughout this lesson, I'll use this kind of cartoony molecule with X and X prime to represent this situation. X and X prime are the same groups chemically. They're the same functional groups, and they have the same connectivity. So in a particular reaction, one or the other may react. In, for example, a substitution process that replaces one of the groups with another group, Y. Since the replacement can happen at either position, we might end up with two different products. And if those two products turn out to be stereoisomers, we can come to a conclusion about the spatial relationships between the groups in the original molecule. This relationship between the groups in the original molecule is what's referred to as a stereotopic relationship. And these are the focus of this set of videos. From here, we're going to survey the four types of stereotopic relationships and discuss stereochemical environments within molecules. The four possible relationships are homotopic, enantiotopic, diastereotopic, and constitutionally heterotopic. In fact, all three of these are collectively referred to as heterotopic relationships, since they indicate a difference in the spatial environments around the two groups. Homotopic groups have equivalent stereochemical environments. To observe these different types of relationships in molecules, let's look at a hypothetical cyclopentane ring bearing two different hydroxyls. The two hydroxyl groups have the same connectivity since they're both connected to a five-membered ring and they're both two carbons away from another hydroxyl group. But are the hydroxyls exactly the same? Let's take a look at some experimental results. Don't worry about the details of this reaction for now. The thing to notice is that this reaction changes the hydroxyl group into an acetoxy group, where AC stands for acetyl. All we need to know for the time being is that this is a substitution type reaction where H is replaced with the acetyl group. When we treat this molecule with conditions leading to this reaction, we observe only one product, the one that's shown here. Of course, it should be possible for the other hydroxyl group to react, and the structure of the product resulting from reaction of the other hydroxyl group would look something like this. Take a moment to pause the video and identify the isomeric relationship between these two molecules. They're homomers. These are the exact same molecule, just drawn from two different perspectives. We obtain the same result if we use an enzyme to catalyze this process, because here again, the potential other product, quote unquote, is homomeric with the structure shown here. And the reason I want to distinguish between these two conditions, we'll look at these two different reaction types in future examples as well, is that the conditions here are wholly achiral. All of the reagents are achiral, but the enzyme is chiral. This will become important later when we discuss the enantiotopic relationship. Because the two hydroxyl groups react to give only one product, in other words, the two possible products are homomeric, we refer to the hydroxyl groups as homotopic. Homotopic groups are in equivalent spatial environments, and we can see this by thinking about a molecular model. We're going to ignore conformational differences for the time being. I'll talk a little bit more about this in a future video. But notice that if we turn the molecule over, the hydroxyl groups change places. The hydroxyl group that was pointing up on the left is now pointing back into the right, and vice versa. We can turn the molecule over again to return the hydroxyl groups to their original positions. Because a simple rotation, which is a physically allowed operation that the molecule is engaging in billions of times a second, the two hydroxyl groups behave equivalently. They're in identical spatial environments with, for example, the same internal distances to all other atoms in the molecule and identical reactivity and other properties. In the second case, I've made the change of inverting the configuration of one of the stereocenters so that the hydroxyls are cis to one another. Once again, the hydroxyl groups have identical connectivity. And let's look at their behavior in the two reaction conditions that we saw previously. Under the achiral reaction conditions shown here, we end up with a 50% yield of the molecule on the left and a 50% yield of the molecule on the right. If we think about the configurations of the two stereocenters in this molecule, R and S in the left-hand molecule and S and R in the right-hand molecule, we'll see that these two are enantiomers. They're mirror images 
and they're non-superimposable. As a result, what we obtained under these conditions is a racemate. What happens when we treat the same compound with the chiral reaction conditions, the porcine liver esterase? Well, now we observe something remarkable. The yield is 100% of a single enantiomer. We observe essentially a 0% yield of the SR compound shown above here. What's interesting about this is that the hydroxyl groups are behaving equivalently in the top case, since we're getting 50% yields of both enantiomers, but differently in the bottom case, since we're getting different yields of the two enantiomers, 100% and 0% in this case. And so clearly, because of the difference in the second case, the hydroxyls must differ somehow in their spatial environments. And the relationship here, and the results of this achiral test reaction hint at this, is referred to as enantiotopic. The hydroxyls are in mirror image spatial environments. And this is easiest to see if we think about the plane of symmetry in this molecule that runs through the central CH2 group and exchanges the two hydroxyls. This difference in behavior of enantiotopic groups under achiral and chiral conditions is unique to the enantiotopic relationship. We'll have more to say about this at the end of this video series. In this third case, I've placed a stereocenter between the two hydroxyls in a trans relationship. Now, treatment of this compound with the achiral reaction conditions leads to two possible products that are diastereomers, since the configuration of this central stereocenter is unchanged by the reaction. As we've seen previously, we should expect the yields and stabilities of these two diastereomers to be different, so we should expect different yields here, and this is what's observed. We might get something like 95% this diastereomer and 5% this diastereomer, with the exact yields being dictated by both the difference in rate and the difference in thermodynamic stability. If we treat this same compound with the porcine liver esterase, we also observe a difference in the reactivity of the two hydroxyl groups. In fact, we once again end up with 100% yield of a single stereoisomer and 0% effectively of the other diastereomer. The relationship in this case is referred to as diastereotopic, as suggested by the fact that reaction of one or the other of the hydroxyl groups leads to diastereomers. And the difference here is that even under the achiral conditions, the diastereotopic groups are reacting differently. This is in contrast to the enantiotopic relationship, where we see equivalent reactivity of 50-50 mixture of enantiotopic hydroxyls. Diastereotopic groups have totally different internal distances to other groups within the molecule, and this is easiest to see with the molecular model. In this related compound, I've just replaced the phenyl ring with a methyl group to make things simpler to see. But if we rotate the molecule this way, we can see that this hydroxyl, which is cis, to the substituent, the phenyl or methyl, is far closer to it than this hydroxyl is. And that leads to chemical differences, differences in reactivity, regardless of what this molecule is reacting with. This is why groups with a diastereotopic relationship behave differently, whether under achiral or chiral conditions. Finally, to complete our system, we need to talk just a little bit about the idea of constitutional heterotopicity. Groups that are the same internally but that have totally different connectivity are referred to as constitutionally heterotopic. And the reason we define this term is so that we have a complete system of relationships. Two groups must fit into one of these four categories that we've discussed. As an example of a constitutionally heterotopic relationship, consider the two hydroxyls in the molecule shown here. We should expect these to behave differently because one hydroxyl is connected to, for example, an sp2 hybridized carbon, while the other hydroxyl is connected to an sp3 hybridized carbon. They have completely different connectivity. It should be natural to think about these two hydroxyls reacting and more generically behaving differently because they're in completely different electronic environments. For starters, one is engaged in resonance while the other isn't. And in contrast to the previous cases where we won't really judge the preference of one group to react over another, here you will need to make a judgment. And that will involve using things like the stability factors to evaluate the relative reactivity of these two groups. The origin of that isn't really spatial. It has more to do with the electronic environment in terms of resonance possibilities and hybridization and things like this in the groups. And given what we've already said, this should seem natural, but just to be consistent with the previous examples, we should expect these two groups to behave differently under all conditions, regardless of what's reacting with this molecule, be it chiral or achiral, the two hydroxyls will behave differently, and we should expect preferential reaction of one over the other.